So, in the first one, what do we have? What do we have? We have we have x intercepts. What are the x intercepts? Negative 2 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. Okay? What also are those? Those are the roots, zeros, solutions, right? Okay. So that would be then negative 2 and negative 1, correct? Okay. Those also then are factors, right? What are the factors associated there then? Nope. One of them is x plus 2, and the other one is x plus 1. Now, what does it mean to be a factor? Let's take numbers, for instance. Okay? What are the factors of 12? What do we got? 12 and 1. 3 and 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 are factors of 12, right? Okay. Agree? What does it mean to be a factor of a number? You can divide into it. More so than just dividing into it. Well, why is 5 not a factor of 12? I can multiply 5 by 12 fifths and get 12. As, a, as an integer? Okay. So more importantly, with the whole division, so more importantly, okay, we're talking division, right? Okay. So what does 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 have in regards to 12? that 5 doesn't in terms of division. What does a whole number solution mean? Okay, what makes a what makes 5 have a decimal or a fraction result? You got to think old school. All the way back to when you first learned division. Doesn't have a remainder. Okay? Factors, when you divide into whatever it is they're a factor of, don't have remainders. Okay? Key point today. Okay? So, if I had a, this function back here in number one, right? I could divide x plus 2 into that function and not have a remainder. I could divide x plus 1 into that function and not have a remainder. Okay? What are the factors then over here that are produced? On the second one. x plus 4 and x minus 2. Okay? Some 
somebody had said two over here, like Max, I think you said two, maybe? Yeah, okay. I said X times two. But that two is a zero, right? Yeah. That's in this middle column. They all mean exactly the same thing. Yeah. It's just how we present them as to what they're what we're going with. Okay? Alright? So those are the factors. Okay? We'll be in your textbooks now on starting on page 326. 326. Okay? Uh, in a minute. Yep. Yep. Okay? So before we've done some function building lessons, and we did those with quadratics, we did a, we did a warm up yesterday with a cubic, etc. Okay, we showed how the factors of a polynomial determine its key characteristics. From the factors, we can then determine the type and location of the zeros. Algebraic reasoning then allows us to reverse the process and work backwards. Okay. So specifically in this problem, we will determine the factors from one or more zeros from the graph, blah, 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 okay? So, page 326 here, this right here is the function. It is graphed right there for us. We don't have to graph it at all. What I would like you to talk to me now about or have a group discussion about is tell me everything that you know about that graph right there. Okay, tell me what you know. What do you know? Um, this degree is opposite. Is not opposite. Uh, why is it an odd degree? Because they're going in different directions. Going in different directions, okay? So the first thing we know is that we have an odd degree. Do we actually know what the degree is? The degree is actually 3. Okay, all right? What else do we know? Positive lead coefficient. What else do we know? Somebody other than that. What is the y-intercept? Three is a number. Zero comma three is a y-intercept. Okay. How do you know that there are two imaginary zeros? Okay. So then, if we're going off of that, then what would the real zero be? No, that would be the x-intercept. What would the zero be? Oh, negative, one. negative one would be the zero. And then what you're saying is this will also produce two imaginary other ones, right? Why? Because the degree is three, and so how many zeros do we need? Three. Zeros are also where we cross the x-axis, right? And this one only crosses one. Anything else that we know? What do you got, man? No bump. So that means it's always. It's always increasing. Oops, wrong color. Or the interval that it's increasing on would be negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Could, but I don't need to in this case, right? Okay. Right. But we could find the average rate of change if we needed to. Okay. And the average rate of change, no matter on what interval, would always be... If our function is always increasing, what's the average rate of change always going to be? Positive. Okay, because it's 
always increase. Okay? Anything else that we know? Okay, all right, that's good analyzation. Now let's go to some, an or some questions. Describe the number and types of zeros. It's a cubic function, correct? So that means that I need to have three total zeros. And we said that we would have one real and two imaginary. Right? Okay. Part B. Write the factor of h of x that corresponds to the zero at x equals negative 1. So my 0 is negative 1. What's my factor then? x plus 1. What does it mean to be a factor of h of x? What does it mean to be a factor? It means that x plus 1 will divide into in divide into the function h of x with no remainder. How can we write any zero r of a function? So if r is my 0, what's my factor? x minus r. Okay. So the fundamental theorem of algebra says that every polynomial of degree n must have n roots. Okay? We know that. Says that I can multiply n things to get that polynomial. Okay? So if I have an x to the fifth, a fifth power, or fifth degree thing, or function, that means I'm going to multiply five things to get that polynomial function. Okay? A cubic, I multiply three things together to get that one. Okay? What we're going to do today is we're going to do something called polynomial long division. Okay? So in order to do that, what I'm first going to teach you is I'm going to refresh your memory on numerical long division. Okay? All right? So numerical long division, we're going to divide 23 into 8,335, okay? So how do I do that, thinking back to whenever it was you did it? Megan? Um, first you can't times 23 can go into 8. And, and how many times does 23 go into 8? Zero. Zero times. So I, okay, so then what do I do? 
So then 23 into 83. Okay, how many times does 23 go into 83? Six. Six. Three. Four. Three. three. Four. Let's try three, because remember, we're doing this without a calculator. Okay? All right? So 23 times three is... 69, so then I would do what with 69 and 83? Subtract. Subtract them, right? Okay, so then what does that get me? 14, and since 14 is less than 23, I know I got the biggest one, right? Okay, then what? Drop the next three, like it's hot. Okay, so now I've got the number 143. Now what? Now I'm looking at 23 going into 143, right? Okay, we get what? Six? Okay, six. So then I do 23 times six. Eight, carry the one, 138. Do what with those again? Subtract. Five? What am I dropping like it's hot? The five. Okay. So we get 55. Then what? Two. So 23 times two is 46. Leaves me with what? Nine. Okay, so my answer here is 362 with a remainder of 9, right? Or it's 362 and 9 twenty thirds, right? Okay. Does everybody understand that concept? Long division. Okay. Now, the reason why I didn't want you to use a calculator was because when we get to polynomials, the calculator's not going to do us any good. Okay. It's not going to do us any good when we get to polynomials. But the concept is exactly the same. Okay. Now, I could spend the rest of the time talking about the bottom of page 329 and Figuring all, all this stuff, you know, and all that fun stuff. But you know what? It's easier just to do it. Okay? So we're going to do, on the next page, we're going to do part B in that question. It's this one right here. It's on page 330. It's letter B in question number two. Now, before we start, I'm going to tell you a couple of things about polynomial long division. Okay? The first thing that I can tell you is polynomial long division is a living, breathing thing. Okay? It needs space. Okay? For those of you that have pets, have you ever had, have you ever had to take a dog somewhere in like a little, one of those little like doggy carrier type things? And they're bouncing all around, the, you know what I mean? They're jumping around and they're not happy because they need space. You know what I mean? We as human beings need space. We don't need to be all right, uptight with, you know, up, right all up in each other's grills. Okay? We need space. These problems need space. Okay? Now, one of the next things, or thing number two is, your organizational skills are going to be tested. Okay? Because you are going to, and the way that I do it, and granted this is me, I'm me, I'm not you, but everything there is going to be a cubic. There's not going to be any other degreed term in that space. In this space, it's only going to be squared terms. In this space, it's only going to be linear terms. And in this space, it's only going to be number terms. All the way down. Okay? Vertically aligned, everything's going to be like that. Okay? So it's going to be challenging for you to, one, give yourself some space, 
and two, make sure that your organizational skills are in check. Okay? So, actual problem. This problem might come to you like this, but this problem, this very same problem, might also come to you like this. Okay? Those are the exact same problem. It might also come to you like this. All three of those represent the exact same problem. Okay? With me? Okay? So, either way, if it comes like this first one, we would write it in the division form. If it comes as a fraction, we'd write it as a division form. Okay? But either way, what we're going to do is we're looking only at first terms. So, I need x here to become x cubed. How do I make x become x cubed? No. No. I multiply it by x squared. So x squared is going to go in my x squared column. Now, I'm going to say to myself, self, what is x squared? times x minus 4. Just like we multiplied that number up, we put on top before, I think our first one was 3, right? We went 3 times 6, or 3 times 23, and then got 69, right? Okay, so x squared times x minus 4 gives me x cubed minus 4 x squared. With me? What did we do then with those two numbers? We subtracted them. So in polynomial subtraction, what you're going to do is you are going to change both of those signs. That is going to be the biggest spot you're going to make a mistake in. You're only going to change the first one. You're going to forget to change the second one. You need to change them both. Okay? Then, x cubed minus x cubed goes away. That's what I want. I want that first term to go away. 2x squared plus 4x squared becomes 6x squared. Then what did we do? We drop the next number, so in this case, we're going to drop the next term, like it is hot. You automatically change the sign? Nope, I didn't change the sign. Oh. Nope, dropped it as is. Okay? Now, I need x to become 6x squared. Let's multiply by 6x. So here then I'm going to say 6x times x minus 4. That's going to be 6x squared minus 24x. Then I need to change both signs. Now me, I like to put a circle around the sign after I've changed it. Okay, so that's what I'm kind of demonstrating up here. And then that gives me positive 19x. Now what? Drop the 16. What am I going to have to multiply by? Multiply by 19. So then we go 19 times x minus 4. That's going to be 19x minus 76. Change the signs. 
that gives me 92. Yes? So my answer here is x squared plus 6x plus 19 plus 92 over x minus 4. With me? Questions on that? Yes, ma'am. Why did you cross out x squared? I could have crossed out all of these. This one would have been crossed out. No, but like. And this one would have been crossed out. Like, why did you put x squared up there, like, right away? Because I needed to multiply this x right here. I needed to multiply that x right there by something to get me x cubed. x squared times x gets me x cubed. Okay? But I don't just do that one, I have to do it all here by that whole divisor. Okay? Ready to try another one? Okay? Now, Looking at this one, I think it's letter C. Yes, in fact, it is letter C. Okay? Just from quick visual inspection, what's wrong with this one? It's a different setup, okay. But can we handle the setup? Okay. What's going to go on the outside of the division? The 2x minus 3, okay. What's going to go on the inside of the division? 4x to the 4th. Then? No. we got to put a placeholder in there because we need to have all of our exponents represented. Okay? That's called a placeholder. So we need a 0x cubed in there. Then we can go to 5x squared. Then we can go to 7x. Then we can go to 9. Okay. we got to put that placeholder in there right at the start. Otherwise, we're going to be screwed up. It, right away, we're going to get screwed up. Because the first thing that we're going to produce then is an x cubed term, and we don't have one represented. So the x cubed is in the function? Or in the it is not in the function, because what is 0 times anything? Zero. Plus 0 of anything. It doesn't change anything, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why we can put 0x cubed in there. I would not put in x cubed, because that's adding a term. Now I've changed my function. It's got to be 0x cubed, okay? So 2x to make 4x to the 4th, that's going to be 2x cubed. So 2x cubed times 2x minus 3 gets me 4x to the 4th minus 6x cubed. Megan, did you see how I chose 2x cubed yeah. there? Okay, all right. Those go away. Those get changed. Leaves me with 6x cubed. Then, drop it like it's hot. What am I going to multiply by now? 3x squared.
So that's going to give me 6x cubed minus 9x squared. Change, change, goes away, becomes 14x squared. Yes? Then, drop it like it's hot. Yes? 2x to 14x squared is going to be 7x. So that's going to be 14x squared minus 21x. Change and change. That gives me 14x. Up to 9. That means I'm going to multiply by 7. Fourteen X minus twenty one. Change and change. That gives me thirty down there. Yes? So my answer here is. 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 7x plus 7 plus 30 over 2x minus 3. Can I, can I, oh, I can't, can't get it all in there. Okay? With me? Today, before you leave, okay, your blue sheet is, is due. I'm going to collect it back by the cart, and I need to give you today's homework, too, okay, which will be due tomorrow.